Welcome to this demonstration on how to install the Symantec Encryption Desktop interactively. As most of you know, most installations are done silently, but in situations where specifications are necessary, you must go interactively. Now, as part of this installation process, we'll also look at enrollment. That's the process of connecting the client to the management server and applying the appropriate policy to the client. For this demonstration, we'll do self-recovery, we'll show you self-recovery, and we'll do enrollment via LDAP. To create the client package, we must go into the management console. Here we're going into the Semantic Encryption Management Server to get to the management console. Logging in as Joe. Nice passphrase, good passphrase. And then once in to the console, we'll navigate to consumer groups. At the bottom of consumer groups is the click for downloading the client. Downloading the client will do the semantic encryption desktop as opposed to the satellite. The desktop is the full featured client. And um, we'll do it uh, through the desktop for the Windows 32 bit platform. You could do it for Linux, Macs, but the client we're installing on is 32-bit window. We'll do English. Um, we're not really customizing. We just wanted to see the other specifications you can make if you wanted to create a customized installation package. Let's download it and save it to the desktop. At this point, you would use your software deployment software to push out that installation package. But what we're going to do for demonstration purposes is we're going to manually install it. So I go to my installation package, double click, invoke it. And yep, I do want to run this. Of course, one of the first things we're going to get is a welcome in a uh, end user license agreement. So I'll accept that. I'll ask us if we want to see the notes, release notes or not. And then we'll download the package. Now we're downloading the package and the drivers and everything, but we're not activating in the product the product until we reboot. So at the end of this process it'll ask for the reboot. Reboot will activate the product and load the drivers into the operating system. So let's uh, reboot. All right, to activate the product. Once the product's activated, the first thing it checks is to see if it has enrolled with the management server. If it hasn't, it'll go through the enrollment process. We've asked for LDAP enrollment, which means we get this pop-up, we'll put in our LDAP credentials. Now, those credentials are going to be used to determine which consumer policy we're going to use for this client. It's downloaded to us, and then we are going to implement that policy. And here we see that policy, by the looks of it, uh, has us uh, has given us a uh, virtual disk. Good. Let me change the name on it. Call it Secure Files. So my uh, consumer policy has virtual disk. Good. Well, encrypt and format. Virtual disk allows you to save things confidentially, where you, with your private key have the ability to see the information and no one else. Alright, so we have our good virtual disk and by the looks of it we're also doing semantic drive encryption and a single sign-on. So here we'll put in our credentials, our LDAP AD credentials. Good. And it looks like we're doing self-recovery. Self-recovery basically allows someone uh, to bypass their passphrase at BootGuard uh, by answering three of the five questions. And here we're uh, specifying the five questions. All right. Uh, notice it is dynamic, the questions. A little bit of flexibility in specifying those questions. And if you want to, as part of your five questions, you can write your own. Enter your own question, which I think is a lot more effective since they can be really customized. Uh, like myself, I like to fish. So a good question is, what is your favorite place to fish? And 
Maybe this nice lake I like to go to, Spec Lake. Anyways, I'll answer. This is the second of the five questions. I'll create five questions which I can use for self recovery. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've enrolled. Now uh, the enrollment process has been completed. And we'll note down here there's our desktop client. And uh, the spinning circle means we're encrypting the hard drive. So we have semantic drive encryption going on. Now, why did this interactive uh, process occur in that sequence? Well, it's because um, of user Joe. User Joe has a consumer policy. Let's go take a look at the consumer policy and see what features are in that policy. All right, uh, here's uh, Joe user. To find the consumer policy, we have to find out what group Joe is in. Joe is in the sales group. Consumer policies are assigned to groups. So each group can have a unique consumer policy. So let's look at sales. And uh, before we go to the policy, let's see why Joe is in this uh, sales group. And that's uh, due to the membership requirement for the group. If I look at membership requirement for the sales group is you must belong to this group, member of. And Joe must belong to the sales group. Uh, as noted in Active Directory. As such, he was assigned to the sales group. Uh, the sales group uses consumer policy named ACME, Remote Laptop Policy. If I go to the drive encryption on the policy, I'll say, yeah, there's that uh, virtual disk. We saw that 10 gigabyte uh, dynamically built virtual disk at install time. Well, that's why we saw that occurring. And uh, we are having a semantic drive encryption. And we're going to do it automatically at install time. We're going to use a standard passphrase authentication, not smart card or TPM. And the other thing we saw was that self-recovery, those five questions, so we could bypass boot guard. And that was enabled uh, for it. And we also. Um, saw that we were doing LDAP enrollment. And uh, that's done by going to the consumer directory synchronization and ensuring or enabling the appropriate setting for LDAP enrollment. We go to the settings. In the settings, we'll see, uh, yeah, it's been clicked. Enroll clients using directory authentication. If that wasn't clicked, the default would be to do email enrollment. Well, that's pretty much the demonstration. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Thank you for attending.